Just about every week, somebody calls me up wanting me to explain the different types of wig construction and wondering which one they should buy. So, with the help of a few of my girlfriends here, let's break it down. When you're buying a wig, especially online, sight unseen, you need to know what type of wig it is so you get the results you're looking for. Here are six basic types of wig construction. Open cap, which has several other names as well, which we'll get into. Lace cap, monofilament, combination, silk top, and polyurethane skin wigs. The first, and generally the least expensive wig, is the open cap, also known as a capless, wefted, or open weft wig. It sounds confusing, I know, but once you see exactly what it is, I think you'll get it. It's a bunch of machine-sewn strips of hair called wefts attached to elastic strips. They're not attached to a pre-made cap the way other wigs are, which is why they're sometimes called capless. The elastic and the wefts form this very open kind of cap, which is why it's also called open cap. The pluses of these wigs are affordability. They're not expensive to manufacture, so that passes along the price break to consumers. Relative coolness of the wig, because air can get through to your scalp easily. Ease of care. You can throw them in the sink and they retain their shape well, if they're a decent quality synthetic and ease of wear. They're often one size fits all because they're stretchy and they almost always have these adjustable straps on the back. My personal feeling is these are great wigs if you're not looking to show your hairline. If you want to show the hairline, it's going to look solid and wiggy. But if you like wearing bangs or any kind of fringe, this is a great choice because the bangs mask the woven hairline. A feature of many of these wigs is something called permatease. It kind of mats up the hair and hides the holes between the wefts. This can also add a little volume, which some experts don't like because too much volume can make your wig look poofy and again, kind of unnatural. But for certain kinds of hairstyles where you don't see the hairline and where a little volume's nice, well, these are an excellent choice and especially if you're on a budget. I've worn these kinds of wigs to many events and nobody's ever called me out for wearing a wig. Well, maybe they're just being polite. I don't think so. But here's me in the wig I'm wearing right now, Wish, by Motown Tress, at an award ceremony with my friend Sarah Schneider, host of Early Music Now on KMFA. And another time having a little dessert at Sardi's. You can get an open cap or capless wig for well under $100. If you want to pay more for one, you certainly can, depending on what collection and what website you buy it from. Lace wigs, either full lace or lace front, are great if you want a more realistic hairline, front end or back. You can go without bangs, you can do all kinds of hairdos, including ponytails. The lace is actually a very fine tool, similar to what they use to make bridal veils. It's sewn to make a non-stretchy cap that fits your head perfectly. This is my full lace wig of human hair made by Ray Marston. Instead of machine-made wefts, you have hand-tied individual hairs or little groups of hairs attached to the mesh. This is a much more expensive wig, I have to say, but it's very lightweight. It's also designed to be realistic looking no matter how you part it or how you wear your hair. You see, you can see my skin right through it. They're more delicate wigs and they have to be maintained with care. The lace front may also need to be customized by a wig technician. The lace extends forward onto your skin and it should actually be undetectable. You'll need to measure your head to figure out what size you are. You can look for my video on how to measure your head before you order one of these online. Okay, monofilament wigs are similar to lace wigs, but they are generally more durable and not as expensive as lace wigs. Monofilament is a confusing term, I know, but let's break that down too. Mono means one and filament means a thread or a fiber, in this case, a hair, one hair at a time, is hand tied to the wig cap, which is made of mesh, similar to a lace wig, but generally a much sturdier mesh. Because it's hand tied individually, the overall volume of the hair tends to be less than other wigs, like capless wigs, but again, because you can see the individual hairs, you can part your hair many different ways and you can show your hairline. See that? If you're wanting a lot of fullness, you may need to go with a different type of construction, which we'll talk about in a minute. But 
Incidentally, a double monofilament wig has a wig cap which is doubled with an extremely fine lining of glass silk to prevent your scalp from being irritated by these hand tied knots, which I think you can actually see there. It's a great choice for people who have very sensitive skin. See, if you look there, you can see those knots in the monofilament area. Now, if you want more fullness, but you still want to be able to part your wig or see the hairline, consider a combination wig. And these are just what they sound like, a combination of two different kinds of wig. A monofilament area on top, which lets you part the wig, while the rest of the wig is like a cheaper open cap construction that we saw first, filled in with strips of machine sewn weft. This brings down the price significantly because it takes less time to manufacture. Some combination wigs have only a very slim monofilament mesh area like this one. So you're limited as to where you can make the part, but you can see where my skin is visible, where the part should be in this wig. Others have mesh on the entire top of the head, so you can part it wherever you want. These give you a nice realistic part as well as volume, but they're not good for most updos because you'd see the wefts on the sides and the back when you'd pull it up off your neck. You may have noticed that there's a lot of lace front wigs and uh, monofilament front wigs and even lace back wigs so that you can, as I say, pull up your hair into a, a ponytail. Uh, they've become very popular and very available. So you can definitely find a full range of wigs that will give you volume plus the more natural hairline. Silk top or French top wigs are a more expensive variation on some of the wigs that we've just been looking at, but they give you an even more realistic looking part where you absolutely can't see any knots or mesh. A layer of fine silk is added over top of the mesh on the crown of the wig, and as each hair is knotted into the mesh, it's then pulled through this layer of silk. The silk top covers just the top of the head, and you can part your hair anywhere in this area for a really natural, lovely look. The hairline can be rather abrupt, so a thin strip of lace is usually added just along the front, about a centimeter of lace. Although I can't show you a silk top wig because I don't own one, if you go to youtube.com and type this sequence into their search box, you know, next to the little magnifying glass, you'll see a very good, very short video by Uniwigs of how all these knotted wigs are made. You might have to hit pause so you can get this down, but I think it's worth taking a look at. Finally, we get to polyurethane, also known as thin skin wigs. They have a polyurethane scalp base, and it looks like the individual hairs are growing out of it. These types of wigs work best on people with alopecia, total or permanent hair loss, for a variety of medical reasons. They'd look a little weird and bulky if you tried to wear them over your real hair as it's growing back from chemotherapy. And they're also somewhat hotter to wear than other wig types. On the plus side, they're really durable, easy to care for, and they can be worked in any kind of hairstyle. Well, there you have it. Now you're an expert and I can send my friends to you to explain the difference. If you found this helpful, please take a second to like and subscribe and don't forget, be sweet to your bean.